in search of the advocate. We are here to honor Brother Mumia Abu Jamal, and we are here to gather strength and encouragement and inspiration from each other as we fight for the freedom of Brother Mumia Abu Jamal, Brother Gary Graham or Shaka Sankofa, to Brother Eddie Conway, to our brother, Brother uh, Coates, Schultz, to Brother Russell Maroon Schultz, to the many others who are on death row, and also to Brother Sekou Odinga, to Brother Matula Shakur, to Brother Sundiata Okoli, and to our sister who we will talk about because she will help us to balance this evening and balance this message tonight when we talk about freeing Mumia. We have to talk about an example of something, and that is the freedom of Sister Asada Shakur, slave named Joanne Chesapeake. At this rally for Brother Mumia Abu Jamal, my subject is Stop the execution, start the revolution. Stop the execution, start the revolution. Let me hear you say it. Stop the execution, start the revolution. Stop the execution, start the revolution. It is written in the scriptures of a people who would be robbed and spoiled, snared in holes and hidden in prison houses. Studying the USA Today and studying other newspapers over the past few months, and it talked about the prison population of white America and how the prison population of white America has fastly moved it into the position of being the world's number one jailer in competition with Russia on the European so-called continent. I say so-called continent because Europe doesn't really fit the definition of a continent. But for the sake of conversation, we'll say European continent. The jail population of America, the United States of America, moving it to the place of being the world's number one jailer. But we're not just talking about those of us who are behind bars. We're all in jail. Every last one of us is in jail. We are a captured nation of people who have been held against our will in the land of our bondage and in the land of our captivity. And when we look at it, we want to turn to what the Muslims believe and what the Muslims want by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the 10-point program given to us by Dr. Huey P. Newton of the Black Panther Party. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad says we want freedom for all, I'm paraphrasing, for all of the righteous now held in federal prison. We want freedom for all black men and women now under death sentence in innumerable prisons in the North as well as in the South. And as a part of the 10-point program of the Black Panther Party, it says we want freedom for all black men held in federal, state, county, and city prisons and jails. I cannot be one that would criticize too hard the marches, the rallies, the battles in the courtrooms. We should use every means to free our political prisoners. It is by any means necessary that we work to free them. But I must say to you that Sister Asada Shakur was not freed by a benevolent judge who woke up one day and decided that he had a change of heart and he was going to let her go home. Sister Asada Shakur 
was not freed by a benevolent prosecutor or district attorney who woke up one day and decided he wanted to do the right thing. Sister Asada Shakur was not freed by a court process of the criminal criminal justice system that decided they wanted to let her go back home to her little girl that she could be a mother to her baby. Sister Asada Shakur was freed because of a black liberation army that went in and took her from the white man and freed her from the jails of white America. Freedom is not given if you depend on the man who puts you in this condition to give you your freedom, then you can never be free indeed. Because if he has the power to give you your freedom with one hand, he has the power to take it back with his other hand or with the same hand. There is no freedom that is granted by your enemy. Freedom is taken. Freedom is the will of the people who are oppressed. Freedom is bloodshed. Freedom is suffering. Freedom is sacrifice. Freedom is giving up your Mercedes Benz if necessary, your Lexus, your Camry, your Rolls Royce. Freedom is giving up your bus pass if necessary. Freedom is a process of struggle. Free Mumia, we demand that you free him. He say, you demand, nigga, that I free him? Well, what you going to do, nigga, if I don't free him? You going to march, nigga? You going to pick it, nigga? You going to put out some flyers on me, right, nigga? You going to put up posters on me, right, nigga? You going to throw temper tantrums in the streets? You demand that I free him. The white man does not respect such a demand. He only respects power. He only respects an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and a limb for a limb and a life for a life. That's all he respects. He has already calculated that we will be outraged. He has already calculated that we will be enraged. He has already calculated that we will march, we will picket, we will cry, we will throw temper tantrums on the radio and on the television, and we will have rallies all over the place. But he has not contemplated that we will kill his ass if he murders Mumia Abu Jamal. He has not calculated that. And our battle cry should be in the world Brother Omar Wiley, our battle cry should be, if Mumia dies, fire in the skies. If Mumia dies, fire in the skies. Let me hear you say it. If Mumia dies, fire in the skies. If Mumia dies, fire in the skies. The white man understands that, buddy. Say, gee whiz, can we talk? Can we discuss this thing? There must be something we can do. Can we work it out? You can't make demands. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, no man or no woman should speak ahead of their actual power to do. If you don't have the power to do, then you shouldn't have the mouth to say. You've got the power, black man. You've got the power, black woman. You've got the power, young black man and woman. If you can drive by and shoot your brother or your sister sitting on the porch, if you can drive by and kill their grandma and their grandpa and their uncle and their aunt and shoot the baby in the crib, then how come you can't shoot this goddamn cracker and free our political prison? shooting of any significance at the police station. <laughs> Brother, Amadou Dia Brother Amadou Diallo shot 41 times by four beasts.
by four devils, by four crackers, 41 times, unarmed, never been in any trouble with anybody. That's on the East Coast. On the West Coast, Sister Tisha Miller, 19 years old, shot 24 times by four white policemen. What is God and the ancestors telling us? Rodney King beat within an inch of his life on camera by four white policemen and the four white policemen were acquitted by the state of California. Do you expect the white man to do something about the murder of Brother Amadou Diallo? And these Negro preachers, these boot-licking, butt-licking, butt-dancing, bamboozled, anybody nigga getting arrested by appointment I would like to make an appointment ah uh, and the nigga preachers ah uh, 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 honey honey I'll be uh, in time for supper tomorrow evening you don't have to wait I'm gonna go down and make my <laughs> I'm going to make my appointment to be arrested. I'll be in by 12, and I'll be out by 2, and I'll be able to do whatever I got to do. You arrested by appointment and think you messing with the pepperwood. He'll lock your black raggedy behind up. He's got enough jail for every nigga that wants some jail. But the question is, does he have enough lives for every nigga that wants to kill a crack? That's the question. It's an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a limb for a limb, and a life for a life. If caskets are rolling in the white community when they roll in the black community, this would stop. If they're rolling in the white community, when they roll in the black community. If they're rolling in the white community, as they roll in the black community. This would stop. Somebody has to say this. Everybody wants to do the easy thing. We're going to vote. We're registering to vote. God damn it, don't miss a word. Write it all down, those of you who came to get it and take it back. Wherever you taking it back. Right. Ain't no Democratic Party gonna save you. No Republican Party gonna save you. No Independent Party gonna save you. And ain't no damn third force gonna save you. We gonna vote. You can't vote your way to freedom, fool. Getting behind some damn glorified shower curtain, pulling a lever voting for somebody. Right, right, Nobody has ever voted their way to real freedom. Well, South Africa, shut up, fool. South Africa is still not free. <laughs> Nelson Mandela is the white man's nigga. <laughs> the hell you think he became the president? And the hell you think he became the president? You don't spend almost two decades in the penitentiary and come out and become president? Ain't that much damn democracy nowhere in the world. Huh? Only these boot licking niggas can do that. Mary and Barry can smoke crack. Be seen all over the damn world on crack. And get out and become city councilman and then mayor again, a damn crackhead. <laughs> running a city. But he's no threat to the white man. You're no threat when you go over and over and over again on the same dead end, unproductive things that we've done in the 60s. You're gonna vote. You're gonna picket. You're going to boycott. Somebody has 
wants to speak to you strongly today because you're falling back into that old integration. Give me, let me have, can you spare? I'm going to pick it. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do everything in every way to get with you, white man. Now I'm going to include you in my religious meetings. When I have big rallies, everybody can come. You know damn well who I'm talking to. And you know what I'm talking about. The white man is all right now. Damn it, he ate the devil on Monday and he ate the devil on Tuesday. Mumia can never be free. Damn it, until you're free. If your brain is not free, Mumia can't be free. If your heart is not free, Mumia can't be free. If you are not free from the chains and the shackles of the white man, Mumia can never be free. None of the political prisoners can ever be free because we will not have the power to free them. We will have exercises in futility. Wasted effort after wasted effort. Have you decided what you will do if they kill him? Have you been discussing it among yourselves? He's discussing from every possible angle that he can imagine what he will do if he has to kill him. Have you decided what you will do? I can't be the one to tell you what to do. But hell, if you don't know what to do, I'll tell you. In Islam, we are taught to all the gods and earths in the house. We are taught, and I want to send a shout out to all the gods and the earths in the house. Hey. Very happy to see uh, Queen Divine Earth also and all of the posse. Brother, I just lost your name. And Brother Marshall and all of the Trenton posse, let's give them a strong black hand. <laughs> to all of the gods and earths in the house, the lessons say kill no one. Kill no one whom Allah has not ordered. Huh? We kill only those who God has ordered. Well, God wants the devil dead. I can't give that kind of order. God gives that kind of order. We're not going to get free until some of us are ready to make a sacrifice. In the month of August, August 7, 1970, the young 16-year-old boy, 16 years old, in Marin County, California, he knew that his brother George Jackson may never see the light of day. He knew that his brother George Jackson may never be free. And so there were those who tried to discourage him. But he and Rochelle McGee, Christmas and others, stepped into the courtroom. He was 16. He stepped in. They came with their stuff. Put their stuff to the judge's head to free his brother George. But before he did, he stepped into the center of the courtroom. Young Jonathan Jackson, 16 years old. He went to court that day. Jonathan Jackson went to court August 7, 1970. He went to court seeking justice. He wanted justice. And so he went in. And they threw their pieces down on the crackers in the courtroom. And he stepped to the center of the courtroom, 16 years old, and looked at these cold crackers all around the courtroom. And as he broke the silence and said, gentlemen, I'll be taken over from here. I'll be taken over from here. I'll be taken over. Ain't no more damn motions going to be passed. Ain't no more deliberation. The foreman of the jury ain't got to go no damn way. And judge, you are relieved of all of your duties. In fact about it, 
put the gun to his head and said, you coming and going with me. He took the judge out of the courtroom with his gun to the judge's head. They took some other hostages. They took a van. They came for justice. Huh? Sabo. Ridge. Justice. People are trying to twist the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad now. Saying that Master Farad Muhammad had a black father and a white mother. And the reason he had a black father and a white mother is so that he could give justice to both people. That's true. But what does it mean? The most Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that justice, the definition for justice is the reward for good and the punishment for evil. And so Master Farad Muhammad came to turn one world out of power and to bring another world in power. He didn't come to integrate the slave with the slave master. He didn't come to open up the holy temples of Islam to the devil so that you weak-hearted brothers could be scoping white women and crackers with blonde hair coming in the goddamn door trying to get you a white wife. No, Master Farad Muhammad didn't come for that. It's easy to tell the people what you want to tell the people when you know the people don't know. Justice is the reward for good and the punishment for evil. You heard the minister Ishmael. He talked about a great and a dreadful day. Great for the righteous, dreadful for the unrighteous, great for the black, and dreadful for the white. Justice. Jonathan Jackson went to court for justice at Marin County. When they went to break Sister Sada Shakur out, they went for justice. That's justice. Justice is not always pleading. Negroes in New York around the Diallo case begging and pleading. We want justice. Give us justice. We're not going to take it. We're not going to stand for this. We want the FBI to come in and investigate. Damn fool, the FBI is the problem. We want the government to look into this matter. You're a fool. You're going to Frank James does something to you, and you're going to call on his big brother, Jesse James, to come and put Frank James in check. Jesse, James, we need you to come and give us justice. Frank took something from us. When Jesse gets there, he wants to see what you got left so he can take whatever his brother Frank didn't already take. You can't take the criminal to the criminal. Yes, exhaust everything you are doing, but at the same time, what is your plan B? If you are revolutionary, what is your revolutionary plan? Huh? You got to have a plan B. You got to have a backup plan. Just in case plan A don't work. Normally when the devil tells you he's going to do something, he doesn't. Damn, when he tell you he ain't going to do it, what do you expect, expect then? They don't want me and Abu Jamal back on the streets. They don't want Geronimo Pratt back in the movement and back in the struggle. They don't want the Black Panther Party to come back. So they brainwash these Negroes. Bobby Seal. Pope barbecue, barbecue sauce. What you gonna do, nigga? The white man come, you gonna throw a barbecue Molotov cocktail, a barbecue sauce Molotov cocktail? Fight him with a damn slab of ribs? You're the chairman of the Black Panther Party, Bobby Seal. Get up from your bed and walk. Stop reveling.
grovelling at the feet of the white man and groveling at the feet of white women, slobbering at the mouth. You look shameful to your people, Bobby Seale. Get up from there. Pick up your bed and walk. Hear him speaking at these campuses, talking about he, he's not for guns and he didn't agree with us going down to Jasper, Texas after they lynched Brother James Byrd, chained him to the back of the truck and dragged him until his head and his arm came off. And he didn't agree with us running the Klan out of town and going to Jasper, Texas with our shotguns, with our rifles, with our bullet bandoliers locked and loaded, ready to deal with everything around us. He said he's working for a global humanistic society. We say, what are you working for, Bobby? He says, it's not about killing white people. It's about building a global humanistic society. On Ice Cube's album, Death Certificate, Lethal Injection, on his video, True to the Game, by the power of Almighty God and the ancestors, I gave him the words that Brother Bilal read. Brother Harif read on the criminal, criminal justice system of white America. But on there, we talk about the fact that you cannot make way for the peacemaker unless you get rid of the peace breaker. You gotta get rid of the peace breaker first. Niggas who haven't said Black Panther in 30 years. Niggas who are so scared of the white man if they poop, they duck thinking it's gunfire. Scared of their own poop. See a black pussy cat and scared as a black panther. Haven't used it in 30 years. And don't want us to use Black Panther Party for self-defense. God damn it, if you stop defending yourself, don't get in our way if we want to organize our people for self-determination and for self-defense. Say we can't wear the symbol. We can't wear the emblem. Take us to court. Boot licking. With all the love that we have for you. We love the Black Panther Party of the 60s. We love your sacrifices. We honor you for your pain and your struggle. We honor you for standing up against this beast. But don't fight us today that if you've left a foundation, we're willing to build on that foundation. Don't fight us today if you've left a legacy that we're willing to now take that legacy to another level and to another plane toward freedom and independence. Muslims of the nation of Islam, leave me the hell alone. Talking about you got guns. What you doing with guns? You ain't supposed to have no gun, damn fool. I have been almost assassinated before. Four or five shot down all around me. Me shot here, shot here. My son was nine years old, then bullets flying all around him. We don't have the guns for black people. We don't have the guns for our own kind. We have the guns for the cracker, for the beast, for the devil, for the white man. But it's also a Negro repellent when necessary. Oh, yeah. You want to be able to shoot at me and not shoot, and nobody don't shoot back? You don't believe in Allah if you have a gun. Muslims all over the world got guns. And you pray with them? You bow down to Allah with them? You go to Hajj to the sacred pilgrimage of Mecca with them? You visit them all over the earth with guns? When you go to their countries, they stand around you with their guns. But we are being murdered. Black men doused with gasoline, set on fire and burned alive. 
black churches where God's name is honored and revered and praised being burned to the ground until it's nothing but ashes. We're being murdered on a daily and consistent basis. Arise in the Ku Klux Klan. Arise in the Aryan Brotherhood. Arise in the Nazis. Arise in the militia. Arise in paramilitary right wing white organizations. Arise in bloodshed and murder from the so called law enforcement policing agencies. Mark Furman said the policeman is God in the O.J. Simpson trial. The murderers of Brother Amadou Diallo in New York, their motto, the, the New York Street Crimes Unit, nothing but death, death squads. Their motto is, we own the night. We own the night. And you don't think our people should have guns? Well, I'm Elijah Muhammad. The Arm Elijah Muhammad say, the Arm Elijah Muhammad say, we shouldn't have no guns. Well, the Arm Elijah Muhammad didn't tell you to vote either. But if you find a way to vote, he said he didn't know the one good politician, that was Adam Clayton Powell. Adam Clayton Powell been dead 30 years, you can't be going to vote for him. Huh? He didn't say just vote to be voting. He said put the Muslim program, which is freedom and independence, separation and independence, a nation of our own, some of this good earth that we can call our own. Put that program before Congress. If we find a politician who will put such a bold program before Congress, stand toe to toe with the cracker, he said that one should get the total backing of the whole population of black people. You ain't got no Negro like that. Who gonna do it? Jesse Jackson? Huh? I don't think I can do it. I don't believe I can go before Congress and vote for separation when I believe in integration. <laughs> what? After NAFTA, except more white folks laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you gonna run? <laughs> Crazy and fool me? <laughs> Who are you gonna run? <laughs> Where are your politicians? You say, well, a, a Muslim candidate is the best. Yes, if it's a real Muslim. Right. But if it's a Muslim trying to integrate, right. if it's a Muslim trying to take away from Elijah's word and water it down, right. that kind of Muslim can't get us nowhere. Right. Well, the lessons say, can you reform devil? And the lessons say that all of the prophets, right. these explanations are blowing my mind that all of the prophets have tried to reform devil. Now they say, but we're not living in the time of the prophets. We're living in the time of God. What are you trying to tell me? That God is going to reform the devil? You're going to take the lesson and flip it. The white man cannot be reformed. His nature is the nature of a devil. He was born to be a devil and he will die and take the tape with you so you won't get not one word wrong that I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. Primo mia. My Lord. Oh, how could he be sitting there depending on us? What a position for him to be in. Can you imagine the pain 
when you, in your mind's eye, look through the walls and the bricks and the mortar and the steel and the iron of the dungeon that the devil has you in. And you don't see your people strong. You don't see your people standing up. You don't see your people willing to break you out brick by brick and wall by wall. And then you get mad with some of the young ones and strong ones because they don't want to work with white folks. Leave them the hell alone. If they don't want to work with white folks, God damn it, leave them alone. Well, the white people are the ones backing Mumia. You're not going to take the nickels, the dimes, the pennies, the dollars from the poor black people who love Mumia and relegate it to nothingness and exalt white people. Every nappy-headed, low-down white whore that is working for Mumia, every no-good, faggot white boy, the transvestite revolution, the transgender crap, the homosexual movement, the gay, lesbian fool, every one of them of white folks who is working for Mumia, they are supposed to work for Mumia because their mama, their no good mammy, their no good daddy, their no good grandma and grandpa, all of them are responsible for the Mumias of the hells of North America and they are responsible for your condition, your condition, yours, yours and yours and all of our conditions. No good bastards should be working to free Mumia and even Enough, it's too goddamn little too late. You ain't got no way out, white folks. If you got a white wife at home, you go home and tell a baby, they say you ain't got no way out. <laughs> ain't no way out. If you got a white husband, you go home and tell him, Ain't no way out. Then you want to bring Master Farad Muhammad in to cover your dirty religion. Well, Master Farad Muhammad had a white mother. How are you going to treat Master Farad Muhammad's white mother? Are you going to disrespect her? No, I wouldn't disrespect Master Farad Muhammad's mother. If I were here and it's the dead of winter and snow and ice on the ground, and she came to the door cold, she may not be able to come in this meeting, but we would let her in the building to warm up and give her a ride to East Philly, West Philly, North Philly, South Philly, South Philly, Gray Ferry, or wherever she lives. Master Barad Muhammad's mother, but listen to me. I can't give Master Barad Muhammad's mother no more respect than he gave to her. It was Master Barad Muhammad who came and told us and taught us that the white man is the devil, that none of them were any good. No, not one. He didn't say, get on the white folks, but leave my mother alone. All white folks are the devil except my mama. You keep all white folks out of the meeting, but let my mama in. He didn't say that. He said, no white people among you, black man and woman. Not my mama, nobody. That you are special people. You are chosen people. I don't want you mixed up with white people, he said. If Master Farad Muhammad didn't make no provisions for his mama, can't make none for her. If her own son didn't cut her no slack, I can't cut her too much slack. I wouldn't be a fool, I'd be civilized. Stop trying to use Master Farad Muhammad to shield your dirty religion. Damn it, I'll debate any of you. You taking this teaching, playing with it. 
You teach me all my life that the white man is the devil? You teach me my whole life that the white man is the devil. Now you tell me it's all right for him to come among us. People lost their minds over the sea. People went to insane asylums over the sea. People all but committed suicide when Wallace Muhammad came and tried to change the teachings of his father. Now you're going to work some slick way to include the devil? Hell no, I will never go along. Hell no, I will never go along. I will never go along. You can shoot me down like a dog, like you did before, but this time we'll be shooting at your ass all the time back. I keep guns around me. And I do believe in Allah. I do believe in God. And I believe that with my God and with my gun, that if you come for me, that my God will bless me to shoot straight. We must build a black liberation army. Even in the white man's law, it says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That's in white law. I'm talking about white law, and I'm talking about God's law, and I'm talking about black law, which deals with a black liberation army. You should be ashamed of yourself, black man. Most of you are wandering around. You're not in nothing. You are not organized at all. Black woman, you should stand up and accept your divine rendezvous with destiny. No black man who is not a freedom fighter. No black man who is not a revolutionary. No black man who is not willing to stand up and strike a blow for our freedom and independence should be able to crawl his raggedy behind in the bed with you. Hell no, black woman. Hell no. Come up to you, come out. He wants the digits. He wants the digits. It ain't standing for nothing. You cheapen yourself, black woman. You are the mother of God. You are the mother of the black nation. You let no weak man in your face who ignores strength and power and wisdom and light all around him and he chooses the darkness. He chooses to curl in a corner or hide in a closet from the white man. Or when the white man knocks on the door, he tells you to go to the door, and he hides in the back. Honey, go tell him. Go tell him, honey, I ain't here. Sister's so damn mad, she get to the door with her lip poked out and say, he say he ain't here. <laughs> Be a man, black man. To the elders who are in the audience. I see some of you beautiful and you're gray and all. Don't know how much time you have. At least go out a man. At least go out a soldier. At least go out a warrior. At least go out a real black man. Hell, with all that hog you eating, with all that swill and swine you eating, you might not have another damn week as it is. Fight like hell to free Mumia this week because you might not be here next week. And if you know you haven't done nothing all this time, it's time that you start doing something. We could build a movement right in here. These young brothers and sisters you saw come up here today. We've been working to organize them now for going on two years. And we don't lord over them. Some of them don't hear from us at some time. Some of them, we go through their cities every now and then or give a call every now and then. But we want to see if they're going to work. Who are the workers? Who are the organizers? Who are the teachers? Thank you, sir. Who are the teachers? Who are the ones that are really 
going to do something to free our people. Poor Mo Monia, Gary Graham, Shaka Sankofa, Gary Graham said that when you come to get me, he said, when you come to get me, I'm not making, don't bring no damn priest to read to me. I'm not saying no prayer with no crack of priest. Don't come to me with no last meal, Gary Graham said, Shaka Sankofa. He said, don't come to walk me to my death. If you choose to execute me, know that when you come for me, I'm going to fight like hell to kill everyone that comes in my cell. And if they can't kill them, they'll be like Rochelle McGee, who's with Jonathan Jackson. They had to build a wall between Rochelle McGee and the judge. They used to bring him in court in a helicopter and bring him down through the roof. Scared for his feet to touch the ground anywhere. He couldn't get to him. At first, he could get to the judge. He would attack the judge in the courtroom. They started putting restrainers on him in the court. He couldn't get up anymore. So he would just ah, and spit on the damn judge. That's all he had was his spit as a black man. And so he would just spit on the damn judge. So then they built a glass wall, bulletproof, as though he had a gun, between one black man, Rochelle McGee, and the old cracker judge. That's fighting. That's by any means necessary. That's what it is. As I near my conclusion, I say to you that none of our political prisoners can be free until we do that which is necessary to free them. And that we have not done to the degree that we should. Reparations. The work of the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the work of Minister Louis Farrakhan, Minister Silas Muhammad, and others. Great work, and in COBRA and other reparations organizations. But we also must help them while they are working and work on the minds of our people. If we don't change our minds and our way of thinking, reparations won't mean nothing. Cracker, give us some reparations money today and come up with a damn special 1999 or, or year 2000 Lexus or Cadillac with a reparations gold package on it. <laughs> and advertise it on TV. Got a special on reparations Cadillac, reparations Lexus, reparations Mercedes. No change can come among us for Mumia for our people, for our youth, for our elders, for our women, for our children. No change can come among us until a change takes place in our heads and in our hearts. Where are the fighters? Where are those who want to stand up and fight? If the cracker knew that we meant business, it would be a whole different ball game. On that old back East Texas road called Martin Luther King, where Brother James Byrd was dragged and lynched, dragged to his death. Did you know that there are black homes all along the road? No farther back than from here to that wall, some of the houses to the road? What would have happened if Uncle Bubba cut Snooky? Ain't Chili Red? And all of them came out with their rifles and their shotguns. And when they saw those crackers wrestling with Brother James Bird to chain him to the back of the truck, they came out and put their guns to these crackers' heads and backed them up off of James Bird or shot them from their porch with the shotgun. So the ballistics goes out the window to a great degree. It's been a whole different kind of history, right? Some of you say, well, we're glad he got the death penalty. I'm not happy. 
that the cracker who lynched, the first one that they tried in the courts, King got the death penalty. He was smiling, smirking. When he made a statement, he said that he was happy that he would go down in history as a symbol of white power. But Negroes saying that they were pleased. The only justice for the three crackers who lynched Brother James Bird would be to chain their white behind to the back of a pickup truck and drag them down the same damn road. That's the only justice. In court, they talked about how he was trying to keep his head from hitting the pavement while they were dragging him over a four mile stretch and how his bones in his elbows had grinded up halfway his arm and the bone was ground away because his elbows were hitting that pavement. He was trying to keep his head up. Here's a cracker received a death penalty. will sit up there in the jailhouse on death row 10 years, 15 years maybe. The only justice would be for us to kill the murderers of Brother James Byrd as a free, proud, and productive people, a sovereign nation under the almighty, all-wise black God. To kill him ourselves, kill him in the most vicious manner according to their standard of viciousness and whatever we could add to that. And to the rats and the stool pigeons who are here, who were sent here, sitting up among us, donating money, dropping it in the bucket, trying to act like you black when you got a white mind. You're a fool for coming in here to spy on your people. The white man didn't come. He sent you. I'm going to do everything I can to wake our people up so that when we find out who you are, we will kill you in the most vicious manner for coming and snitching on our people against the legitimate inspirations of our people who yearn to breathe free. Cut your damn head off. Cut your right leg off and leave your left leg on. Burn your behind, boil your behind alive first. And then burn your behind to the ashes. And then flush your ass ashes down the toilet. Only way to get free, we got to get strong. This weak stuff is not going to do it. Don't go backwards, brothers and sisters. Don't let anybody take you backwards. Don't go back. Integration has failed. I know what Brother Malcolm said. And I know Brother Malcolm might have believed it when he said that he saw white men in Mecca and he saw them and they were some of the best white men he had ever seen and that that proved to him that if the white man in America received Islam, if the white man in America received Islam, he said, he thought that it could transform him. I've been to Mecca eight times. See, God hooked me up right. I didn't get suspended from the nation and then go to Mecca. I had been eight times before I got suspended. You know, God has a big eraser, you know. <laughs> Working on the stuff that went down in the 60s, that's all the 90s is, is the six turn right side up, correct it. So I went before. I saw white Arab Muslims so damn racist until you could cut racism in the atmosphere with a knife. Give me just a few more minutes. You have no business taking Elijah Muhammad's teaching and now following Wallace D. Muhammad back to the of arms and his clutches in Sunni Islam. Yeah. 
everyone's fight. You go follow the Arabs? You don't know a damn thing about Islam. None of you. Yes, you can recite the Quran. Yes, you can recite the Bible. But do you know the real history? Do you know that the Kaaba in Mecca that sits there as the spiritual center? Do you know that the Kaaba, when you study the ancients of your own people, not the damn Arabs, you sit around the mosque and the masjid, glorying in Arab history, Arab scholarship, Arab warriors and Arab stories and when so-and-so did this and Abu so-and-so and Kareem so-and-so and Abdullah so-and-so and Muhammad Ahmed Abdullah this shut your damn study your own history if you study your own history you will know that the Kaaba that sits as the spiritual center of the Islamic world has a root in your African mama and your African daddy and your African great grandmother and great grandfather and down the line. When you study the Medunetta of ancient Egypt or Kemet, you will know that the Ka and the Ba represents the spirit and the soul that the real Kaaba in Mecca is not a house built by people there but the real Kaaba I'm looking at it's you black man you are that black ancient house of God you are the Ka and the Ba you are the ancient house of God you are the Beit Allah let's look at it your holy holiday where you fast for 30 days, you call it Ramadan. Don't go too fast. Let's break it down. It's Ramadan. What is it? It's Ramadan. When you pray your prayer, you say, Aludu Billahi Mini Shaitan Nirajim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim Alhamdulillah. And you go on and on till you get to the end and you say, I mean, I mean who? I mean Ra. When the Christian preacher gets through praying, he says, Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be the under. When he finishes praying, he says, Amen. Amen who? Amen Ra. The white Christian, the white Jew, so-called, the white Muslim, when you all finish, you end in Amen, the name of the ancient God, the hidden one, the prime mover behind all things. Amen Ra. You can't get away from your black self, black man, black woman, trying to hide in white Arab Islam. Not as long as there's a breath in Khalid Abdul Muhammad. I will face your guns. I will face your bullets. I will face all of you bastards. And I'll back your asses up with the truth of all money. That's right. Damn it. That's right. You have no right to do these people that way. You have gotten old scared some of you weak and broke down or you want a little money now you have no right to do these people that way no right to do it it's criminal to do it let's go a little further the place you call Mecca 
When you study the Medunetta and you understand that the original name for Mecca was Becca. And in the Medunetta, Becca representing the eastern direction. But not for everybody. Some of you erroneously say that all Muslims face the east and pray. That's not a truth. That's not the truth. That's a damn lie. All Muslims don't face the east and pray. You face the Kaaba. It's the spiritual center. If you live in the north, you face south if the Kaaba is to your south. If you live in the south, you face to the north if the Kaaba is towards your north. If you're in the west, you face east. And if you're in the east, you face west because it's in the center. And if you're all around it, you have to face whatever direction that it's in. All of these errors. Elijah Muhammad was right and exact. When the teachings of Elijah, whether you want to be a Muslim, black nationalist, and I'm that, pan-Africanist, and I'm that, revolutionary nationalist, and I'm that, black liberation theology teacher, Student, and I'm both student and teacher, whatever you call yourself. As long as Elijah Muhammad's teaching is strong among the people, the people are strong. When you remove that strong teaching from among our people, our poor, pitiful people go down to almost nothing, and they go back to wallowing in the filth of integration, reveling at the feet of the white man, begging the white man for freedom and independence. When you tell them to stop calling the white man the devil, a whole generation has grown up that did not know that the white man was the devil. Another generation had gone to sleep that used to know that the white man was the devil. And so the best way to teach is to teach by repetition until the student has learned the lesson. Our condition bears witness that we have not learned the lesson. Mumia being behind bars proves on death row that we have not learned the lesson. And our many other political prisoners and those who are on death row, it proves that we have not learned the lesson. Look at it for what it's worth. In Mecca, in Haram Sharif, the sacred precinct, inside of the eastern corner of the Kaaba is a black stone called El Rukin, called El Hajr al Aswad, the black stone. El Hajr al Aswad, El Rukin. Pilgrims from all over the world go and kiss the black stone and say, Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest. If they can't get to it to kiss it, they point to it and they make circumambulation around the Kaaba with their focus on the black stone inside of Mecca. Six miles outside of Mecca, not allowed to be set up in or within the sacred precinct, is three white pillars, small, medium, and large, snow white. All of the pilgrims the night before make a journey to the valley of Muzdalifa and gather 49 stones. And the next day, they stand before the white pillars. And they all stone the white pillars from all over the world. They stone them and say, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. They throw with all of their might against the little devil, the medium-sized devil, and the big devil. Shaitan, little shaitan, medium shaitan, and shaitan Kabir, or shaitan al-Akbar. The white pillars are outside of Mecca, six miles. Can't go into Revelation 13 and 18 at night. Another subject for another time, the mark of the beast and 666. But we got Brother Steve Coakley with us tomorrow night. Check. Check. Where? Where is Steve Coakley? No, he sneaked in here and I didn't even know he was in here. <laughs> Give him a hand back there, brothers and sisters. Brother Steve Coakley. Let him see you, Brother Steve. There he is.
He'll name the names. He'll pull out the research. And that's what we need, actual facts. Actual facts. It's true. I try to cover these things with you. Islam did not start with Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Islam means to enter into peace. We had peace before Prophet Muhammad. Huh? The rituals of Christianity, the Ten Commandments, coming from the declarations of innocence of Mayat. Cracker took 10 of the 47. Can't live by 147. Can't live by the 10. And said, damn, I better leave the rest of these up. <laughs> the creation story of the book of Genesis. Make the pilgrimage to the first holy city where pilgrimages were made, not to Mecca, but the holy city of Abydos. Go to the temple of Seti One in the sacred temple of Seti One in Abydos and read the creation story on the wall. You can't escape, Christian. Your Christianity is from your enemy. Your Christianity is from the devil himself. Your Islam is from your enemy. Your Islam is from the devil himself. Your Judaism is from the devil. Your Judaism is from the enemy himself. Somebody got to be bold. Where are the men who will stand with us? How many of you understood what you heard tonight? Let me see your hand. Hands down. How many of you believe what you heard to be the truth and good for black people? Let me see your hands. How many of you don't know what the hell you believe? Let me see your hands. How many want to see the new Black Panther Party for self-defense come back? How many want to see us set up free food programs to feed our black multitudes? Let me see your hand. How many of you want to set up free clothing programs so that we can clothe our people, put shoes on their feet, and put coats on their back when it's cold outside? How many of you want to see the black family back together? Black man back with his black woman. There is no woman like the black woman, black man. No woman like the black woman. Don't you let no revolutionary fancy talk. Don't you let no religious fancy talk. No Christianity, no Judaism. Don't you let no Islam, no communism. Don't you let nothing put you with the white man's woman and you abandon your own woman. This black woman is the best. This black woman is the one. The one and only Dr. Barashango is saying on the front row. That's that black woman. Mother of civilization. Queen of the planet Earth. Goddess of the universe. Oh, black man, we've been blessed. You leave Susie Rodden Wickle alone. Give me a black goddess sister. I can't resist her. No blonde hair, blue eyed, pale skin, buttermilk complexion, recessive, depressive, straight up but straight down, miss six o'clock, no frills, no thrills, euthanoid, cocosoid, subject to have the itch, white cave bitch. Not for me. Give me the black woman. Give me the black woman. Black woman, black man, that's the precious divine gift to us. She keeps us warm in the wintertime. She keeps us cool in the summertime. And keeps us hot all year round. Brothers 
and sisters. I only ask one thing of you, just be strong. Stand tall. Mumia needs us to intensify the effort. Press. If you're in the courts, keep the pressure on. If you're in the streets, keep the pressure on. If you're playing in underground, playing well. As Brother Harif, as Brother Harif said, playing well. Be wise. If I die or get killed, I don't care. All I want to know is that I lived my life in a way that would put spirit of fight, truth, righteousness, harmony, balance, order, and reciprocity in my people. That's all a man could live for. That's all a woman could live for. That somebody that the seed of revolution will take and righteousness will take right a root in their head and in their heart. And some cracker policeman, after murdering our people, will be sitting at Dunkin' Donuts off guard, dunking his donut in his coffee. And some good black man, some good black woman, will sneak up on him and ease up on him. At nighttime, as Malcolm used to say, when it's even steep. At nighttime, when all black, even when they butt naked. to have your ski mask. We learned that at the Million Youth March. Everybody who comes to the Million Youth March, when will it be this year? Saturday. Repeat after me. Saturday. Saturday. August, 14th. August 14th. On Malcolm X Boulevard. Malcolm X Boulevard. In, Harlem. In Harlem. During the Honorable Marcus Garvey's Red, Black, and Green Week. Everybody bring a ski mask. If you can't get a ski mask, Bring a black bandana or something to put over your face. Keep it with you. Some will wear it all day. Some, if it looks like something is about to break out, put it on there. So you can beat the hell out of any peckerwood who attacks us in self-defense that day. And they won't know from which is behind whipping cane. And August 14th, during the Honorable Marcus Garvey's Red, Black, and Green Week is Brother Hiram's birthday. Let's give him a happy Kuzaliwa. A happy Kuzaliwa in solar return earth. I want to take just a minute or two for any questions that you might have. We've talked about May 24th. Is that correct? I'm talking about May 10th first. I'm sorry, I got the two months. May 10th, the Million Youth March 2. You must know the work that we've already done. And we're going to ask you for some more money before you leave. They had a $20,000 bond on one of the brothers. They had a $15,000 bond on another brother. Cash bond. They arrested four or five of them. I'm happy to report to you, every one of them is out of jail and at home. We got every one of them out of jail, and every one of them is at home. We only have two left now. All the cases, Attorney Roger Wareham, and he has now waived Attorney Malik Shabazz into uh, the state of New York. He's taking one to represent him, and Attorney Wareham is taking the other one. We need some money. And all of the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, we raised it. 
and in a short period of time, cash bond, no property. They wouldn't accept any property to get them out. So the Million Youth March 2, the date that I had in my head about May, is May 10th. We want to be in court with them. We want to have so many black youth there, so many black elders there, so many black men and black women there, till we overflow the courtrooms all down the halls and all outside. The Million Youth March 2. We want to defend them. I wish we had the address of the court. What's that court? That's uh, what center? 100 Center Street. 100 Center Street. You should be there about 8 o'clock in the morning, May 10th, in court. Now, April 24th, and our millions for Mumia, we want all roads lead where? to Richard Allen City that you call what? Philadelphia. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and insanely, the city of brotherly love. <laughs> All roads lead here, April 24th. What's the location? Where will we begin? City Hall. At City Hall, April 24th. Brothers and sisters, uh, we've talked about Brother Mumia, Brother Gary Graham, Brother Russell Schultz, uh, Brother Kabir Hadass, right. Brother Eddie Conway, Brother Malik Muhammad, Brother Zulu, many others. We talked about uh, Matula, we talked about Sundiata, we talked about uh, all of them, huh? Sekou Odinga, and others, many others. Let's before the night is over, before we leave, I'd like to get a legal pad or a tablet. I'd like to get the name of every black man and woman who wants to either work with the new Black Panther Party for self-defense and will go out and buy your shotguns and your rifles and get armed in your homes. And there will be some who don't want to work with the new Black Panther Party for self-defense, but you might want to work with us on rebuilding Brother Malcolm's work with the OAAU. Right. This time we're calling it the Organization of All African Unity. And it's the building of what Brother Kwame called an African United Front, or a Black United Front, or an organization of organizations. And working with us is also Minister Cornell X, out of Houston, Texas, with a bunch of uh, great number of young brothers and sisters with him, the new black Muslim movement. But some who don't want to be Muslim work with the OAAU in the building of the Black United Front, the African United Front. And to be a member of the new Black Panther Party for self-defense and the building of the Black Liberation Army, you can stay right in your organization and stay right in your various religious affiliations and be a member of the new Black Panther Party for self-defense. We're going to be calling on some of our great minds to hold key positions. High priests, priests and the ministers of research and intelligence and culture and deputy defense ministers and field marshals and sisters. We ain't got no hang up about no sisters. We just want to be free. If a sister's gonna lead us to freedom, I'm snapping to attention and saluting her and we're moving on toward freedom and independence. These positions are open to you as well as to the brothers. Now as I conclude, do we have any questions? I can only take one or two. That's one. Is that it? I want to see all hands at one time, and then we can't add any hands. One, two, three, four. Is that it? Five. Five. 
Brother's hand was first. Yeah, I saw Mecca, brother. Well, Islam, sir. Since we were on the subject of Mecca, I wanted to ask you, since you were over there, there was something in the lesson that talked about the house together. Where the, uh, well, brother Jesus is buried. I have heard that I have not heard the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teach it himself because I never met him. But many of the ministers that I came up under, I have heard them teach it. If you're asking me if I visited that site, I did not. I'm inclined to believe what I was taught, whether I have seen it or not. Well, he talked about a Jesus of history. He talked about a Jesus of false Christianity. And he talked about a contemporary Jesus who would be the actual fulfillment of Bible prophecy and scripture and Quranic prophecy and scripture that would be from among the black man and woman, a virgin nation of people who would give birth to a Messiah, a people who for hundreds of years will have had no spiritual and divine relationship with God. And he called that a virgin nation of people that would give birth to God, I mean give birth uh, to Jesus, to the Messiah. And he would be a black man, in his words, from among us. So he has given us this uh, Jesus from different angles. He said the truth is like a diamond. Depending on the angle that you look at the diamond, diamond, it gives off different light, different rays, and in some cases, different color. And there are different perspectives and time periods dealing with this Jesus, and one just straight up mythological. And yes, sir. All right. Well, Islam, sir. Uh, I have to know how. Thank you for your question, brother. Yes, sir. I have to know. Uh, first, I have to know. How did Musar become a half original man? And why, why did Musar ever leave and live in Egypt at all? And the town Musar is outside of uh, near Turkey. The town called Musar near, near Nimru. Right? So uh, and, the, and the lesson we taught about Musar and Moses two different characters, right? One, one is like a pathetic thing, one, one's a real character. So did Musar ever live in Egypt at all? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that no 700,000 or more, or any number, of white so-called Jews have ever been in bondage in what is called Egypt by the Greeks, the Freaks, uh, called Kemet by our forefathers and foremothers, that they have never been in bondage in Egypt. That's the white man's lie. He's always trying to rob us of our birthright, knowing that we masterfully and mathematically and spiritually were able to build the pyramids. He wants us to believe that he was in slavery in Egypt and that they built the pyramids and take that away from us. If we don't go for that, they tell us some creatures from outer space came in in a flying saucer and landed and built the pyramids and went back out into outer space. They really give the credit to everyone except the original black man and woman. Let me get you back to your question. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that no Musa, in one sense, now he answers it two ways, that no Musa ever freed any white Jews from bondage in a black Egypt, that the Old Testament is prophecy, and New Testament is fulfillment of that prophecy, and that the Old Testament prophecies are the prophecies of a people who would be in bondage for 400 years, in a strange land among a strange people, and that that people are us here in the hells of North America. And a modern day Moses would be raised up in our midst. And we are the only people in the annals of time who have been in bondage for 400 years in a strange land among a strange people. The white imposter Jews do not fulfill that prophecy from scripture. Now he teaches us that Moses or Musa went into the caves and hills of Europe to civilize the devil. That the devil lost everything except the language and went savage, 
crawled around on his all fours right, right. in the caves and hills of Europe, yeah. eating juniper roots and eating each other and eating his own waste. <laughs> and knew nothing about fire. Right. Huh? And, have, and cohabiting, cohabitating and having intercourse with the dogs. And that Musa went into the caves and hills of Europe. EU meaning caves and hills. Rope is the rope to bind in. That's what Europe means. He was to be there for 2,000 years, generation after generation. Moses was sent in, and the job of Moses was to get them up, aboard in their back, so to speak, and stand them upright so that they could get on with their mission, so teaches the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, for six days or 6,000 years to rule the original black man and black woman to tap the weaker, lower nature and desire in the germ or the atom of life of the black man and woman, isolate it and drive it to its last stage. So teaches the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and put it over us to rule us for that period of 6,000 years and it would be a most horrific hellish 6,000 years. And once we would come out of that, and the purging process, and we're not finished with that yet, and the purification process, that we would return to our original place of godliness and glory. So he taught us that Musa went into the caves and hills of Europe. He said it like this, according to what my teacher taught me, Minister Louis Farrakhan. He said that the messenger said, maybe, maybe Musa was in Kemet or in Egypt for a short period of time. Those are his exact words as my teacher taught me that maybe he was there, but there was no great exodus, there was no emancipation, so to speak, of any white so-called Jews. Yes, sir. The word caduceus means the shedding or development of a new civilization. As Moses lifted the serpent up, nobody had a serpent going around the snake, around the cross, yes. that represent a stance that the Europeans being taught, being raised, turned to a higher civilization. That's what the word caduceus means. So the, the scripture, yes, you're right on it. The scripture says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, it goes on further to talk about the Son of Man and the work of the Son of Man. The next question, please. Thank you for your question. Because he was right. That's why I'm still in that. Because they, 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 the king would not be black. Moses going there, he was too black. Moses was a black man. He had to get a right, a white man to go into the cave because they killed him. They even took a bear, uh, took a stick and beat a bear. That's what the white devils was down eating worms dead. They fought the bears with and that's where the people in the cave, black people, those white people you find in that part of the country escaped and we kept them there. When we drove them out of Africa, back to the cocaine, I mean, to the mountains, we drove them out of there because they couldn't deal with humanity and they still have it today. <laughs> As my son would say, <laughs> you're the man. You're the man. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. It sounds like there's a great hunger for wisdom, for teaching, for black liberation theology, for pure, unmixed, undiluted, and untampered with in any form. That you want to be black again. My name is Sister Kasima. Uh, and speaking of hunger, my family and I, Brother Saladin, my mother, and myself, we're trying to pull our resources together to get a black owned supermarket. We've already started a food co op. We would like to know if anyone besides yourself would know of any black farmers that are selling products in this area. 
we seem to have a hard time getting that type of information. And since the, uh, what's the name of the party again? The African, the revolutionary, the whatever. But <laughs> since the all the parties are trying to come together. Oh, the new Black Panther Party, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> But since we all trying to come together for the same focus and the same purpose, if we could link up, then we could get this process faster, you know, done faster. It's three of us, and we're, we're willing to do all we can to get the supermarket up and running. And we, you know, we've already put it in motion. We started the food co-op, but we would like to know of any black farmers in the area. I don't have that information. Maybe someone in the audience after the close of the meeting could get with Sister or Brother Saladin on black farmers. Uh, you really have to change the thinking of our people to set up a black supermarket. That's right. Oh, yeah. The Nation of Islam set up a black supermarket in several cities throughout the country. And if it were not for the strong Muslim population and presence in those cities, those supermarkets would have suffered miserably. Because if it's going to cater to the righteous, it's hard to keep a supermarket open. If you don't have any beer, you don't have any wine, you don't have any whiskey, you don't have any tobacco, you don't have any cigarettes, you don't have no pork, no hog, no swine. If you don't have all the things that are detrimental and will hurt our people there, many of our people would rather go to the devil where they can get all of the things that they're used to buying and cash their check and do it all in one place. So you have to have that support in the community for that kind of venture. But it can be done. We will do it. Good. 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 Now, I'm not talking about living or dying. I'm talking about <laughs> philosophy. I know where you're going. Go and ahead. someone picked up the phone and said, you know, the only way we can assure that this thing will stay strong and solid if we go and reach out and ask Brother Collins create any hypothetical position <laughs> they could think of and put the weight on you about the nation. You know where you need to love it. So the question will become, <clears throat> What would you think about having been asked to be some hypothetical something in the nation if there was this philosophical decision to reach out to you? And what would you do if such a hypothetical thing was done? Because on the other side of it, it is because all of us, all of those, all of those who stand with you on this side of the yard would surely hate to lose you or to miss you or to see circumstances weigh upon you that would change your position. 